So here we have the proper way to operate a desiccator, pulling out the drying tubes for the reaction, filled with calcium chloride. You always remove a lid from a desiccator sideways, never straight up and down. Okay, so we are now measuring the magnesium out for the Grignard reaction, and we have obtained several centimeters worth of magnesium that adds up to just over 0.3 grams. And we're going and sanding off the outer surface on our magnesium. Once we sand that off, we will reweigh it and cut it to the exact weight before we chop it into pieces. So now we have sanded this magnesium down to a weight of about 0.301 grams. So it's very close, depending on how much I'm moving over the balance. Now we're gonna cut that magnesium into strips, small strips. I put about like one centimeter. Yep, about one centimeter or less each. And so we'll continue cutting that into strips and then add that to our dried reaction flask. <laughs> <laughs> as long as they're not flying across the room. <laughs> Which tends to happen. Okay, so while we're cutting up the aluminum, we have also set up the reaction uh, apparatus here. You can see the addition funnel on one side here with the pressure equalizing arm. We have our drying tube at the top. Our stopcock is attached. Our center is blocked off with a stopper. We have our stir bar inside. We have our condenser hooked up with the water inlet here at the bottom and then the outlet to the sink at the top and another drying tube at the top of that apparatus. So that means that you aren't going to get any moist air inside there. Right? So we've added the magnesium through the top and we're now sealing it back up again. So we have our little magnesium pieces down in there. We have our um, crystallizing dish down below ready for heating source and we placed it on a stirrer, but we're not going to use the hot plate because right now we have ether in the hood and the ether is uh, prone to flash fire, so we will not be turning on the hot plate. We're adding our first portion of ether through the center neck of the flask and we'll stop with that up. And we're going to then also add one iodine crystal the center neck of the flask. The iodine crystal will help us initiate the reaction. Okay, so now we are measuring the bromobenzene. We're getting the correct volume, which is about 1.3 mLs, 1.2 mLs. 1.2 mLs, so two portions of 0.6 mLs from the syringe pipette into three mLs of ether. So once we have that solution made up on our graduated cylinder, and we will make sure that our addition funnel is closed, meaning that the stopcock is horizontal, we can add it in there, being careful not to pour down the arm, right? That's why we have the arm, the pressure equalizing arm in that position, so we're not tempted to just pour through it. Right, and so there's our ether solution with chromal benzene in the funnel ready for the addition into the Grignard, which has now, that ether is now dissolved to iodine. The reaction flask into uh, the crystallizing dish so it can start stirring. We're gonna add about half of the chromal benzene mixture. You just have to eyeball what about half would be. So you can see there we're adding a little bit. So about half of it is left. And now you can see it's stirring with the magnesium. Now, sometimes what you want to do initially just to see if it started a reaction right away is you can stop the stir bar and see if anything is taking place, like boiling on any of the pieces of magnesium. It doesn't appear it is. It's, it's getting, getting a little cloudy. Yeah, it's getting slightly cloudy, though. Cloudiness is an indication that the reaction is starting. 
oftentimes when the reaction starts, the iodine color dissipates and it gets cloudy. And sure enough, look at that. The iodine color has dissipated. The solution has become cloudy now, right before our eyes. So we're hoping now that our Grignard reaction is going, we're gonna go ahead and let that go for a little bit and we'll pick the video up in a moment.